Hello? Jessica Jones. You are a cheater. When it comes to superhero stories, there's a widely held belief that a hero is only as good as their villain. And in the case of Marvel's Netflix shows, the bad guy, or lack thereof, can make or break a season. The show pivoted in an unexpected and tragic direction in season two by attempting to dismantle our idea of a villain altogether when Jessica learned that her long lost mother Elisa was actually alive and a murderer. Yikes. The new season introduces arrogant serial killer Gregory Salinger, aka Fool Killer, played by Russian Dolls Jeremy Bob. Salinger has no powers of his own, which makes him a much more pedestrian villain than David Tennant's flamboyant Kilgrave. Is that why you've been torturing me? Jessica, I knew you were insecure. That's just sad. Considering all the trauma Jessica endured over the first two seasons of the show, it's telling that everyone in Jessica's orbit is far more self-destructive than she is in season three. Malcolm, Jerry, and Trish are all wrecking balls, spinning out of control after their many misdeeds last season. And aside from being justifiably furious at Trish for killing Elisa at the end of last season, Jessica is probably in the most stable, level-headed place she's ever been when season three begins. Sure, she's still drinking and screwing the pain away, but she's also trying to maintain healthier boundaries and is actually functioning as a competent PI. Season three does a very effective job of offering context for the character's actions, and in most cases, allowing us to empathize with them. It doesn't completely erase the frustrations of some of last season's B and C plot lines, but it helps. Jerry's behavior is still frequently baffling, even as she continues to struggle with the ALS diagnosis she received last season and the sense of powerlessness it causes. This season, she reconnects with an old flame, Kith, and immediately sets about trying to dismantle her seemingly idyllic marriage. Jerry tells herself that she's doing something noble, but we know she's just driven by selfish desire and insecurity, seeking out someone to help her feel less alone before she dies. No one gets to this point in life without regrets. Malcolm is now working for Jerry as the firm's in-house investigator, and it's safe to say that the fearsome lawyer's influence has not been a positive one in the former addict's life. But the season really belongs to Trish, who makes for a surprisingly compelling character here, thanks to Rachel Taylor's layered and heartbreaking performance. The season's two strongest episodes are both told from Trish's perspective, offering us a Hellcat origin story of sorts as Trish comes to grips with the surprising powers she developed after last season. The contrast between Jessica and Trish is the most compelling storyline of the season. Jessica also has a new ally and hookup in Eric Gelden, another comic book character who gets a TV twist here. Eric has low-level psychic abilities that apparently allow him to sense when a person has done something bad. He makes a good foil for our heroine, even if his abilities sometimes make him more of a hindrance. But where season three excels is in its thorny, complicated examination of morality and justice. By digging further into the gray areas that our protagonists inhabit, Jessica Jones offers a surprisingly nuanced exploration of what constitutes right and wrong hitting similar beats to Daredevil season two, but with a defter touch that we got from the show's heavy-handed Punisher arc. As with all of the Marvel Netflix shows, the season once again loses steam around the midway point. But overall, Jessica Jones' season three succeeds by telling a character-focused story. There's certainly closure here, even if the season wasn't initially intended as an ending before Netflix canceled the show. While Jessica Jones season three initially appears to be telling a more traditional serial killer story than its previous super-powered seasons, Gregory Salinger's introduction opens up some compelling moral challenges for Jessica and her allies. The emphasis on Jessica's detective work may make the season feel like slow going for Marvel fans who prefer their heroes to stick to punching, but this meticulously crafted mystery rewards your patience, offering an incisive and meaty deconstruction of heroism that has echoes of Daredevil and even Game of Thrones all while keeping its prickly protagonist and her relationships in clear focus. If this is the last time we see Jessica Jones in her current form, although we really hope it isn't, season three serves as a fitting farewell for this fascinating and complex heroine. What did you think of Jessica Jones season three? Tell us in the comments section. And don't forget to check out our other video on the best fights from Marvel's Netflix shows. And as always, be sure to follow and subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch.